Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Pure Accelerate 2017. Brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome back to Pier 70 in San Francisco, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Stu Miniman. Ray Smith is here. He is the Assistant Director for Technology at the Mississippi Community College Board. Ray, thanks for coming on theCUBE. It's good Glad to see to you. Glad to be here. Glad so we were to be having here. a good conversation off camera, but tell us a little bit about you know, the College Board. Well, the Mississippi Community College Board is, uh, um, we are the board that coordinates with the 15 community colleges in the state of Mississippi. And part of our uh, job is to make sure that um, enrollment figures are, are taken care of. We look at budgets, we work with the legislature, and more importantly, we work with the community colleges in helping develop good outcomes for our students. Okay, so it's a, obviously a, a, a public institution, yes. public funded, so you got a, you know, you got a responsibility to report Absolutely. to the public. Do you also, have responsibility for, uh, well, what services do you have responsibility for? You said enrollment, but. I am, uh, for instance, I'm, I'm responsible for a statewide network. Uh, the community colleges are a little different than some entities in that we have a shared network in which uh, all 15 community colleges, they are connected back to a board office. We act as the ISP for the colleges. The colleges submit data to us. We also have in place a uh, longitudinal data system in the uh, state of Mississippi in which we collect information and we report that information up the line for our longitudinal data. But more importantly, what we do is we count students and we pay based upon enrollment. Well, I mean, community colleges play such a critical role today in the education, which we all know, anybody who has kids knows how expensive it is to educate. Yeah. And the colleges are way more open these days about accepting community college student transfers, allowing students to yeah. take summer classes at community, my yeah. son, for instance, goes to GW, he's taking some math classes at community college, really helps uh, address you know, the cost, it helps people who aren't ready to go to college. I mean, talk a little bit about the mission and the role that your college plays. Our, our system or, or the board office, yeah. what we do is, again, we coordinate. Each community right. college is a separate entity amongst themselves governed by a local board. Right. But from the state level, we administer um, uh, the payment based upon students. And one of the things that we do is we, we're heavily involved in the workforce. Okay, that's a real big issue uh, in our system right now to train more um, of, uh, people for, for the jobs that we're trying to uh, bring in to Mississippi. And in addition to that, uh, we have strong academics in which we take, our students take two year academic courses that transfer to our universities. But more than anything, well, our purpose is to try to make a better Mississippi in providing uh, services, education, and training to the, to the uh, people of Mississippi. Well, it's great, you're, you're, you're a feeder system. I mean, Absolutely. in essence, it's a, it's, a, it's a fast turnover, it's a two year cycle. Absolutely. Right? So your job of enrollment has a lot of pressure on it. Now, what kind of pressure does that put on the technology infrastructure? Well, couple of things. Number one, community colleges are education-based institutions, but at the same time, uh, people come there because of the lifestyle. Because uh, as coming out of high school, a lot of students aren't quite ready for the big right. university. So they come to the community colleges looking for a lot of the things that they have at home. Um, you know, internet, fast internet, for instance, and um, and also the ability uh, to, <laughs> that's the big one, <laughs> and uh, the ability to um, have online classes uh, where they don't have to come on campus or, or so forth. But uh, our students want everything that the major universities have and they want everything that they were used to at home as well as within uh, coming out of K through 12. Okay, so let's, let's get into the, the relationship with Pure, right? Pure Accelerates, let's talk about it. What do you, what led you to them? Talk, talk okay. about your journey, the okay. kind of the before and after. Sure, well first of all, I have a real small staff at our agency and we have a lot of big things to do. What's small, Ray? Small, three people including oh. myself. Oh wow, okay. okay. For 15, 15 colleges. 15 colleges, statewide 15. network, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what we were looking for was a system that would allow us to bring all of our technical resources into a smaller unit. 
we looked at the converge systems of um, some some other um, uh, competitors uh, to, to Pure early on. And what we were really wanting to see, or what we needed help with, was more of a technical infrastructure more than anything. But what we found, it was, it was way too complex. And it actually required all of the additional services that you received in terms of technical support. When we moved to Pure, we looked at uh, the Pure um, storage, for instance, and one of the main reasons we, we did that was our current system was coming up for renewal. And the renewal itself was uh, it was triple what it was the year before. The maintenance renewal. Maintenance renewal. And um, <laughs> it was the traditional forklift, okay? We weren't ready to forklift. So in looking at Pure, what we were looking for was number one, simplicity. We were looking for more speed. We were looking for all of those things that would make life easier for us. What we uh, ended up getting was a situation where we were able to purchase a Pure Array for the cost of maintenance of what we were looking wow. at before. The cost of maintenance. We got a Pure Array with three year maintenance on it. So it was a no brainer from our standpoint. Yeah, and, and let me just put, put a point on that. Yeah. It, you know, when you say simplicity, a lot of people would say, say oh well, you know, give you more time to work, but you're going to pay for it more up front. But you're saying that from a capital expense standpoint, this was now a savings for you compared to keeping your old cube. Understand this, the yeah. Pure Array is the first um, uh, piece of technology equipment I've ever purchased that will not be classified as an expense. It's an investment. Okay. Simple as that. Because what we purchase, we will not have to throw it out when we upgrade. We simply, as we saw today in the presentation, we upgrade our software, we get uh, with same pieces and parts in place. It is, uh, it's an investment. Yeah, can you walk us through that a little bit? Because you've got the full, uh, you know, converged infrastructure solution. Sure. Were you using Cisco before, or was was that something you added? I was using you Cisco added? from a UCS standpoint. Yeah. I was using another manufacturer storage. Uh, we uh, actually we moved to the flash stack on our first conversion. We kept our UCS, but we removed the storage and uh, converted it all to a flash stack. And uh, then we subsequently purchased an additional flash stack. But what it has bought us is exactly what you mentioned earlier. We now have time to do things as opposed to just being a technology person. Yeah, and Ray, what, one thing, when you talk about upgrades, so you know, you've got your compute, your storage, and your network. Yeah. Storage sounds like you can upgrade it and move there. With Converge, you can upgrade it. Your network too, because network tends to be install it and then don't breathe on it because I, I don't want to mess it up. So right. does the full solution get upgraded or how do you manage, do you manage it as a stack or do you manage the individual components? We, we manage our stack itself. Yeah. Now, from the infrastructure standpoint of what we do with internet service and so forth, that is, uh, that's handled with an, another piece of equipment. But we have, we were able to number one, shut down two full racks of storage equipment down to uh, for you, roughly. And uh, it's changed our whole costing structure inside of our data center. The data center is much cooler. And of course, the, the whole support piece of it is just unbelievable because there's no one coming in to replace blades every other week. Well, I was going to say too, it had to have an IT labor impact. Yeah. So what would you have done? You guys, small stuff. It's yourself plus three individuals, correct? That's correct. What would you have done if you didn't didn't get there? Would you just have to work more nights and weekends, or what? what? That's what we would have done. We would have continued to do that, as a matter and of so fact. So you were doing that. That's so what you, we were is doing. It, is it fair to say you got a lot of your nights and weekends back? And Absolutely. So presumably, people are more productive during the day. Absolutely. They're happier, spending Absolutely. more time with their families. Absolutely, and <laughs> and and access to our data is a lot quicker than it was before. So working less, you you get more done. Correct. Do, Jeff, this is a, that's a good do more with less story, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Because usually do more with less means you figure out how to work nights and weekends. I mean, you remember that cycle of, you know, the, the, the 20, 10, 15 years of hell after the dot com burst, it was like do more with less, do more with yeah. less, do more with less, and all it meant is more hours for IT people. And I guess we hit the, the breaking point. Yeah. And now technology has got us into this problem. Is technology finally getting us out of this problem? <laughs> From our standpoint, it has solved uh, at least 50% of man hours that we have been using just to keep our systems up and running. Now, uh, I work it all from one pane of glass or from my cell phone. 
And you, here's the thing is, what value did that really provide, that extra nights and weekends to the organization? Uh, it, it, I guess the value was, if it didn't get done, IT would fail, was the value. But it wasn't incremental value, right? Well, what we've been able to do is to move more into the, the job responsibilities that we're that are actually there along with the technical side. Some more strategic stuff? Absolutely, I have a developer now that can spend his whole time developing as opposed to um, responding to some error message on a hard drive or whatever. So I'll make a prediction. So, you know, I, I, I think it was one of the, it might have been Greenspan, but he said when the, when the, during the 80s, you know, we all went, went to PCs, they said, you see, you know, the, the, the productivity numbers aren't, aren't upticking but we're spending all this money on technology, but you don't see it in the productivity numbers. And then of course in the 90s we had this productivity boom. Mm -hmm. You kind of seeing some, some flatness in productivity, but the stories that we get like this, yeah. I, I think we're going to have another boom. Do you feel that way as a technology practitioner? A absolutely, even, even myself, who I deal more with the infrastructure uh, piece so far as our servers and so forth, uh, I have time to do a whole bunch of things. We're redesigning, for instance, our websites. We're doing a lot of other things now that we honestly didn't have time to do. And I think that's a big factor in the flash. You know, it's not just speed. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, David, something we, we've been talking about for years, especially with some of the MIT guys, is as yep. automation and tools and platforms are actually going to free us up to be able to do more. I mean, it's the stories like Absolutely. your developer wasn't developing, and now now they are. Absolutely. Uh, so, so yeah, you know, what what, what <laughs> What are you seeing that's going to be, enable you to do even more? Is there anything you're asking for from the community to that, you know, either some announcements you've seen this week or other things you're looking for to Believe help you? it or not, yeah. the announcement that I just heard today about the active-active uh, the scenario, that's it. I have two The, the, the multi-site replication? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so you used to work at EMC in the yeah. heyday, and they, and they referenced it today. I mean, SRDF was kind of the gold standard, expensive, complicated, yeah. but... 1994. But <laughs> it, it, it changed the business. Yeah. And what I heard, maybe you, you alpha geeks can help me you know, squint through it, but what I heard is we're going to dramatically simplify that Absolutely. whole process. So, so that's, that's what you heard, but add some color to that. What does that mean for you? What that means for me is now, my two sites are, will operate as one, and that I actually have an, a real active, active uh, configuration that I'm not afraid if something goes down that the other one's not going to be there. I'm, I don't have to go through the process of rebuilding on the other side because it's all automatic. There are a number of things that were said that if you understood what we have gone through over the past couple of years in working, trying to get uh, together an active active environment um, it was it was just like the creation of fire as far as I'm concerned yeah, and it, it, it's something we've had in storage forever is the reason we over provision and get such low utilization is because if I have a failure or something goes wrong you know yeah you know if, if something's a little slow I have trouble if I go down I'm out of a job absolutely <laughs> you know, you know? Absolutely. okay but so but in, in the traditional vendors weren't able to solve this problem for you I mean they've been trying for a while right I mean sure so, but you didn't see anything from if, those guys. If you, if you attempted to do that using hardware base and software base, it's, it's more than just a notion. Uh, I have reasonable assurances, and I, based on what I've seen with Pure, that it is going to be as straightforward and as simple as they have described it. That's great. All right, Ray, we'll give you the last word, Pure Accelerate. Uh, is this year, were you here last year? I was not here last okay, so year. This is your is first, first year, and it's Thoughts? great. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. I mean, things you're seeing that are interesting to you? Or? Oh, absolutely, everything. Yeah, like, everything. Wait, why, why do you come well, to Well, number shows, one, uh, I, I come to learn something new. I, look, I like to hear about the, the uh, announcements, number one, and um, I like to be able to have the opportunity to meet uh, some of the, the people who are actually uh, building, designing, writing the source code for, for this stuff, uh -huh. and it's, it's amazing. And I got to ask you a personal question. So you shared with me, you're, you're, you like to funkify, you're a, you're a bass player. You still, are you an active bass player, you play in a band? Uh, my band has, has gotten back together for kind of a short reunion here. You know, we, are, we have some roots that go back to hip, the hip hop, and uh, it'd be interesting seeing Snoop here tomorrow night. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Ray, thanks very much for coming right. to theCUBE. Appreciate really it. Really a pleasure Appreciate meeting you. All right, keep well, it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break. This is theCUBE. We're live from Pure Accelerate 20, 2017 in San Francisco. We'll be right back.